beloved one, I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed, son. My greatest testimony, the testimony I covet, is that at the end of my life, it shouldn't be that people say, this man is this, a great man, you did this and that. Those things are, they honestly don't mean anything to me. I covet the testimony of Enoch. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God. Not walked for God. You can walk for God and not walk with God. You can give to the house of God and not walk with God. You can preach for God. You can do business for God and yet not walk with God. The character of the spirit finding expression. My charge to us this morning in light of this first biblical index for spiritual maturity is that we must be sincere and look at our lives. Can I truly say the character of the Spirit is finding expression in my life? What is, what is the, the report card from my place of work among my contemporaries, my spouse, my children, in church? I'm not talking of eye service. I'm talking of genuine spiritual growth. That people look at you today and they can say he may be any other thing else, but I know that this one is true. He's a Christian. When John was speaking about John the Baptist, he said there was a man sent from God. He never associated him with his earthly his, his, his earthly origin again. He said, this man, he's demonstrated something that is not earthly. There was a man sent from God. Years ago, I went to preach. It was for a crusade in Kano. And while I was preaching and ministering, I ministered to a dear mother and this woman came out to be prayed for and when I looked at this woman the you could see someone who was an epitome of a genuine Christian the life and the energy that flowed from this woman was compelling and then the woman told me something she said by the privilege of God's grace held her house her Bible and she finishes the whole Bible every 15 days I said, who should pray for who now? How do you start praying for this woman? What am I going to tell God to do? Believe me, especially for those of us who have the privilege of being in the ministry of the gospel, 
people don't care how sound you are preaching or what kind of thing they want to know that you are a genuine child of God that is the most important thing first and before you are happy that I'm talking about preachers alone this involves every other person too you can't say I'm not a preacher so I am allowed to do my own thing mm -mm. this is a call to higher levels of spirituality where your life and your character becomes a true reflection of Jesus. Listen, let me tell you this. When people look at your life, you should be what Paul calls a living epistle. Do you know what that means? A living epistle means that if somebody forgot to do his morning devotion, the moment he looks at you, you become a continuation of what he was reading. That your life literally is a scripture explaining many things about God. So if he was reading, say, about the fruit of the Spirit and he had to rush for work, and now he's feeling guilty that I did not read my Bible, the moment he sees you, you become a consolation because he can continue to read his Bible as he looks at you. What do people read when they look at you? For many people, they read a novel, a nasty one that says this person is not a child of God. For someone, they read and they see that this is a child of God that is easily given to compromise. This is true for politicians. This is true for businessmen. This is true for career people. It is true for all believers. Number two, what is the second biblical index? for measuring growth and maturity is god helping us number two are you ready your depth of comprehension of the principles of the kingdom your depth of comprehension of the principles of the kingdom this is very important your depth of comprehension of the principles of the kingdom knowledge in one word how do i know you have attained unto a state of maturity knowledge your depth of comprehension first corinthians 14 and verse 20 please first corinthians hmm. god is helping someone but thou O oh lord are the shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord art a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head i'm saying this because in god is lifting somebody and i believe this that you will look at your former self and marvel and wonder you will know that so this is you know how a snake molds coming out of his former self into a new self you can turn back and people will say something has changed that after what happened to you in the name of jesus christ first corinthians 14 20 brethren he says be not children in understanding how be it in malice be children but in understanding be men you must grow this kingdom is knowledge driven this kingdom dominion in this kingdom you're excelling in this kingdom walking in the victory that christ has purchased for you is knowledge dependent it's not an issue of sentiments or emotions. Please listen. Time will not change anything by default. The day you have knowledge, the requisite level of knowledge, I can hold this mic forever and it never comes on because the knowledge to just turn on this button is not there. I can stand blaming the mic. I can stand blaming the manufacturer even blaming the one who's giving it to me not knowing that all it takes for me to enjoy the blessings of this mic is to know and you see ignorance in this kingdom is costly and the remedy for ignorance is to find and pursue light 
Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. You don't arise and shine because you are tired of sitting. You arise and shine, not even because your light is available. It's always been there, but the day it comes to you, it sustains the power to cause you to arise and to shine. Let me quote Amplified. I love to quote what Amplified says. May God bless you. It says, arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Hallelujah. So if you must rise from where you are, please look up. Financially, spiritually, sociologically, career-wise, you don't hand the responsibility over to God and say, one day it go better, we say, if it happens, so it happens. It's a well-intentioned cliche, but it's only a recipe for disaster. If it will ever happen to bring glory to God in your life, it will be at the instance of your accessing light, knowledge. Jesus, from age 12, he went to the temple. What was he doing? He was learning with humility. I submit to you, and I'm, I'm not just speaking to EPC. I'm, I know that there are people connecting from across the globe. I'm speaking generally. Many believers do not rise because of pride. Not because of the absence of the light. It is amazing that you can camp around defeat for many years. Whereas five minutes of light can be the liberating power. Light and darkness have never had a reason to be in a contest. John 1.5 says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Are we learning? For instance, please look up. You may find an individual, respectfully speaking, who may not be doing well financially, even though a sincere believer. You try to do what you know to do and it looks like it's not working. And you do not want to compromise and soil your hands. You want to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity. But how many believers have gone to the word of God to find out? It is pride to ignore the creator's manual and expect his results. No, when you buy a product, a fridge, there is a little pamphlet that is kept there. Is that true? That is the manual's the owner's recommendation for utilizing his product. You cannot ignore the owner's manual and then expect to get that result. God is not only the God of the heavens, he is Father. The word father comes from the Greek word Abba. Abba means source. Abba means sustainer. Abba means defender. Abba means protector. If this is true about God, where is his fatherhood in our lives? It then means that there is something we are not accessing. Listen, let me tell you this. Until we are willing to take responsibility under God to say, my financial state, my spiritual state, this victory of demons and principalities and powers over my life, the mediocrity that surrounds my life, my job, I take responsibility. There is something I do not know until we are willing to take responsibility. We will keep excusing it, sometimes justifiably so, and yet not rise. Let God be true and all men lie. Why does it look like you can have two believers and one person both born again, maybe even born again at the same time, maybe even mentored under the same assembly or structure, and then you find out that one lives an excelling, victorious spiritual life, one whose life is, is an inspiration to the body of Christ, and then another would live a defeated life consoling himself but one day I know that I listen whether you choose to be Abraham or Lazarus you can go to heaven but how you get there matters they both made it but one went there as a defeated person scrounging through life almost missing it and one went with dignity and honor can I tell you the truth do not allow your limitations mentor people into believing that that is how God is 
If men use my life to learn God, if I am the only Bible they have to read, will I misrepresent God? We have to take responsibility and allow our lives. Part of the reason why we contend for results in every area of our lives is not just for our personal benefit. We are mirrors. We are reflecting someone and we are mandated to reflect him properly. Knowledge. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae and he began to pray for them. And in his prayer, he said he was praying to God the Father that he would grant them Colossians 1 and verse 9. He says, I pray for you to and desire that ye might be filled with number one, the knowledge of his will, and then to be filled in all wisdom, and then to be filled with spiritual understanding. There are many things that believers do not know. And we must honestly submit ourselves to learning. Please look up. If a non-believer or a young believer runs to you right now and says, I know you have been in church for 10 years. I have been oppressed. Nothing is working in my life. What will be your recommendation? Like a patient runs to a consultant. And listen, when you, when you talk to a consultant, a consultant is not only one who has gone to school, he's one who has gained experience and has learned until he's been accredited. Is that true? And while the patient is complaining, I have runny stomach, headache, the consultant is looking for certain things. And he can write with uncanny mastery and say, I know what is wrong. I found out. Can you diagnose people's condition spiritually? You don't have to be a prophet. Maturity affords you the opportunity that you can look at a person's life and say, I know what is wrong. The favor of God is not on your life. Genuinely, I know what is wrong. You lack character. I know what is wrong. You do not understand the power of relationships in actualizing destiny. I know what is wrong. There is laziness and laxity. You are not productive and valuable. I know what is wrong. Your prayer life is down. Your word study life is down. I know what is wrong. There, there's the fruit of the spirit not manifesting in your life. When you look at people who are in need, how do you help them? Maturity affords you the opportunity to truly be a blessing. Because with, with a surgeon's precision, you can know what is wrong and what needs to be corrected. As our faces are seated this afternoon morning, there are many people who have several issues. I know we are laughing, but there are people who are already quarter to, you know, crying. They are almost giving up. Do we sustain the intelligence to profess solutions that work? I say this respectfully speaking because there is no reason why God should send members to any church that does not have a solution to give. Jeremiah 3.15 and I will give you pastors according to my heart. He says they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. That is why I thank God for a conference like this. I see it as, I see it as a determination in the heart of the leaders and the eldership to see to it that we all together rise to higher points of maturity and stature. Hallelujah. I can tell you one thing we love Jesus and we serve him not just because of things not just because of results we love him for who he is however in our dealings with God God is benevolent enough to allow us enjoy the blessings of being his children while we serve him I do not believe in the Christian expression that allows an individual to intentionally live a defeated life with only heaven as a consolation. That is not in this Bible. The Bible says, I am come that ye may have life and you may have it more abundantly. This is not a marketing of flesh and carnality. Do not get me wrong. But that there is a balance. You can live a victorious life not to wait in defeat and hope that a trumpet will bail you out. He's coming as king of kings. If we are living in defeat, it is not the coming of Jesus necessarily that is the problem.
many people have been resistant to the knowledge that will help us to become excellent in life you see that and let me tell you this when believers do not have consolations to their christian experience all the attributes of the flesh will start coming jealousy envy because if you succeed and you are succeeding extremely and I'm suffering, I'm not exceeding. It would take God for me to not be jealous and angry and petty. It has nothing to do with being good or bad. It is the natural human condition in the face of frustration. But if we can all rise together, which is God's plan, it is not God's idea for a few people to be superstars doing well and then others sit in admiration and pain mixed with jealousy wondering why their lives are that way. No, no. Everyone has been called with a holy calling. And let me tell you the truth. The Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. To the Yoruba person, to the Igbo person, to the Hausa person. It is not your background. Ask Esther. It is not the enmity of your brothers. Ask Joseph. It is not even your mistakes. Ask Samson. It is lack of knowledge. The requisite level of knowledge. For Jesus to produce apostles out of disciples, he spent time mentoring them methodically for three and a half years. Notice the ratio of teaching to impartation or empowerment. Empowerment and impartation came one day, but they were learning every day to the point that when Jesus resurrected, you would think he had time to celebrate his victory. He said, go back. There's still a lot we need to learn. He took them for 40 more days, teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. I am very passionate about learning what I do not know. It does not embarrass me when I find an area of ignorance. There is no point sitting in pride and struggling and paying the price. I want to tell you this. Challenges are not generic. They are only a product of the limitation of the knowledge we have or otherwise. That means what can be a mountain for you is not a mountain for another person. It is only a mountain because of how our knowledge or ignorance makes it so. This is true. Every time you are bankrupt of knowledge, my Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. It is the reason why Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 encourages us. It says that we receive the word of Christ with meekness. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing yourself in psalms hymns and spiritual songs that it will dwell in you richly hallelujah praise the name of the lord please say knowledge one more time there are two reasons theologically speaking why jesus cried in his earth work the bible records jesus crying two times the first time he cried was in john 11 and verse 35 at the grave of lazarus he cried because he had lost someone so dear to him and they said, oh, how he loved him. The second reason why Jesus cried was when he stood over Jerusalem and he cried. He said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if thou hast known, even in this thy time, the things that pertain unto your peace, he says, but they are hid from your eyes. He cried because he saw a people, though sincere, were mad in all kinds of ignorance. We have responsibilities to go for knowledge specific knowledge and let me tell you this no student learns at his terms it's not found anywhere there is no serious student who will learn at his terms have you seen a student who will go for lecture and say lecturer um i know that the lecture is by eight but let me tell you this um you i paid school fees so you come by 12 and i'm coming for that lecture hall uh, I'm, I'm coming to the lecture hall with uh, and while he's talking say hold on hold on you are trying I don't know what you are saying I need to pick a call the student submits to the lecturer's intelligence as proof that he's willing to learn I will tell you why many people do not learn in church most times when we come we assume that the men of God do not know anything and we hope let's see if there is one or two things they have to say 
and so we continue to recycle pain and abort cheap victories but things are changing in Jesus name that by reason of this conference God is going to begin to help us with exactitude to pursue the requisite level of knowledge and please look up do you know that if you do not have sufficient knowledge you can have knowledge but not sufficient to bring you the results you're looking for first Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 please we'll find somewhere to pray I pray that God has helped us this morning first Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 first Corinthians 8 and verse 2 here's what it says if any man think that he knoweth anything is it in your Bible it says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to follow many of us here have been involved in the academia or in teaching a student who gets five percent a student who gets 25 percent a student who gets 30 percent and a student who gets 35 percent a little question for you who was the highest of the four but who passed the exam Are you seeing that now? So if you are given an award for the highest, even the one who failed the least will come to collect an award. But based on the grading system, both the person who collected the award and the person who did not even write the exam will be in the same group. This is how it is for many people. Sometimes respectfully speaking, the little we know becomes a barrier to stop us from knowing more. In fact, ethically speaking, the reason for most people's failure is their success. You can succeed in a way that it makes you fail. Because now you will say, is there anything more to learn? Look at Paul at the zenith of his apostolic ministry had this to say, that I may know him. A man who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament that I may know him. Grace and peace, he says in 1 Peter chapter 1, just write it for reference, First, 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4, he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge, through knowledge. Grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. When people send me text messages commending me and saying, you know, their honest reviews as to the things that they feel God is doing in and through my life, I appreciate them sincerely, but I remain a student of knowledge. There are many things I do not know and I'm not ashamed of it. I pursue knowledge with, with the determination of someone just starting. You watch those who collect the awards in any Olympic race and all of that as soon as they are done they pat themselves in the back for just a few maybe some time to rest and they get over walking again preparing for the next season you know champions because of their determination to increase not from a competitive standpoint they know that many people depend on their knowledge can I tell you something about growth nobody claps for you for the same realm twice once they clap for you once that is over for that dimension if you do not grow you will never receive any applause again number three what is the third biblical index that measures growth and maturity the outworkings of the power and the ability of God in and through your life the third biblical index to know that a believer has now attained unto maturity is the outworkings of the power and the ability of God in and through your life. Wow. When we talk about the power of God, we're not necessarily talking about the charismatism around the display of power. We are talking about rising to a point of power and authority where what brought you down yesterday 
can no longer bring you down today because you have gained strength. Remember the Bible says the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. Strength is proof that you know God. What is strength? Capacity. 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 He says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. There are people today who will tell you, I'm angry, I'm going to leave God, I trusted him to do something in my life, he did not do it, I'm hanging my boots, I'm tired. You see, that is, that is proof that your strength is small. When you get to a point where you build capacity, there is no going back. You burn that bridge behind you. For me to live is Christ, and even if I die, is gain. I fear that the Christianity we practice in Nigeria and Africa, if not edited by love, but firmness, will not stand the test of time. Believers cheapen themselves at the slightest challenge. Hallelujah. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I have met many dangers in my life as a man of God. It is, it, is only, it is only the God of heaven who has kept me. I can begin to tell you stories. The work that the Lord has given me started in Zaria. And for those of you who know Zaria, you know that that, that is a, it, it's a vola. I don't know how many crises happened in my presence. strength some of you are already giving up because you have not built strength i remember one time i was rushing to go for a meeting to connect to take a flight and go for a meeting and as soon as i was on my way to kaduna they sent a text the airline that time i think it was chanchangi or irs and they now said the flight had been cancelled i just told the driver i said can you go to my duguri it was my duguri i was going it was a friday it is dangerous to be around the road on a Friday afternoon in those regions. I said, can you go? He said, yes. I said, let's go. Because the believers, they needed a lot of strengthening. And I said, I was coming. They were so excited because several men of God would say, we are not coming. We love you, but we'll pray for you from afar and then send support. But you said you answered the call. I passed Kano barely one hour when there was a bomb blast and they declared curfew. You see that? That night, this, this is a long time ago, I slept in Potiskum at the gate because they were already fighting in Meduguri. And they said, you have to sleep. I slept inside the vehicle there. And I said, Lord, if it is for you, I will spend my life serving your purposes. This thing is not, when you see God lifting people, but ask questions behind every glory you see, there is a story just because you don't know the story does not mean there is no story hallelujah i remember when i got there i looked at the people and i said my god they were happy they cried they cried they cried they cried i'm sure that we'll be able to make a sacrifice for those outside even if it means to stand praise the name of the lord the outworkings of the power of God. Please look at me. You need the ability of God in your life. Principalities and powers and demons are real. The Bible is not silent as to the fact that we are not alone in this side of God's kingdom. Are we together? It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Please look up. There are many of us right now, the situations that we are going through, I tell you by the authority of scripture, is not a medical situation. It's a demonic situation. And if not dealt with by the power of God, it will eat up and destroy your life just like that. This is not about some charismatism or, or abuse of power and all of this. I'm talking about the provision that the word of God gives. God would be irresponsible to leave us in a domain cohabiting with Satan and not give us the means to be able to stand and defend ourselves against the wiles of the devil. Can I tell you this? 
if you do not have power the devil will destroy your children destroy your future destroy your health destroy your finances the language that the realm of the spirit understands is power it's as honest and simple as that apologies to those who are not science based but for those who are science based when there is one of sir isaac newton's law i'll make it simple so everyone understands sir isaac newton a former scientist and natural physicist he postulated a few laws the laws of mechanics and one of them i just want to pick one of them he said that a body will remain in a state of rest or uniform motion is that true except compelled by an external force to act otherwise in other words you leave a thing here you will find it here after 1000 years if it must move there must be a force greater than what is keeping it to move it that means your destiny will remain there age will not change it until a force moves you our children will remain there L let me tell you this by the privilege of God's grace I've had the honor of ministering to people and conditions that if not by the mercy of God those people would have died like chickens we cannot allow the devil to keep oppressing us now I know that when we talk about the ministry of power I submit to you there have been abuses and carelessness and all kinds of things in the body of Christ you know manipulations and this I know but just because something unreal is there does not mean something real is not there believe me if your life is bankrupt of genuine spiritual power you will not be able to survive the days we are in psalm 66 verse 3 say unto god it says psalm 66 and verse 3 how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you it takes the power of god equa plateau church please listen to me there are many people destined by god upon the plateau that god has directed them to come and be blessed to come and be changed even in this assembly but I submit to you, Satan will not fold his arms and allow the families that need to come and be blessed. There are gifted and skilled people that God has sent through our prayers to come. Paul said, I desire to come to you. Even I, Paul, once and again, he said, but Satan hindered us. Satan will hinder anything that is pro-Jesus, including your life make a declaration that my children will serve god i will serve god you have drawn a line satan will say all right this is not about being fanatical this is the truth i remember a gentleman who he was the only son of the mother graduated first class true story he went to collect his um certificate his statement on his way returning a, a bike or a car just came and cleared the mother was rejoicing and said i may have been a failure in life but thank god he raised somebody that i will be able to rejoice before i pass on and she just had a report that they just just cleared. don't tell me it just happened no sir mm -mm. Mm -mm. there is a real devil there is a real adversary who is determined to thwart the purposes of God. Satan will not fold his arms and watch Plateau Church continue to rise and go from glory to glory. But it will take power to keep rising in spite of. If you believe, please say amen. amen. That Equa Plateau Church will keep going from glory to glory amen. and grace to grace. Amen. It takes power. It takes power to move through the vicissitudes of life and to be able to emerge. There are many sincere people today, graduates, love the Lord, just when God wants to open a door for a good job to help the families, here comes Satan again. I wish I didn't have to tell you this, but I'll be lying to you. 
I have to bring to you the whole counsel of God. I have been a victim of demonic oppression myself. So I know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. I used to have a friend, he was a classmate. This gentleman got married, the wife just had a baby and he called me one day crying. He was returning back, the wife was returning back and then I think he had some encounters or something, some demonic things and the wife and the baby burned to ashes. I don't mean to scare you and I'm not playing with your mind, I'm only telling you the truth. If Satan has not come near you, don't think he doesn't know you are there. It is only that you have not made any impact for Jesus enough to attract his presence, but he's coming. So don't you laugh at the people. If you see any family that Satan is trying to attack, don't just laugh and feel they are not spiritual. Pray for them and pray for yourself because he came to Jesus. He will come to everyone. Jesus himself, you would think as the son of God, he would not come to him. Satan cometh to me, Jesus said. But it is my prayer that before he gets to you, the whole armor of God would have fortified you. That you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Paul's final word to the church in Ephesus. Mentoring them on the things of the kingdom. Equipping them like this. He said, finally brethren, 6 and verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The next verse, please. It says, put on the whole armor. The whole armor. That means make sure that you are fortified so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Please look up. You come up from a family and you say, Lord, would you empower me financially? I want to see to it that your church grows. I want to see to it that there is no need. I want you to know that it's not only angels that hear that prayer. Satan is hearing it too. What did you say? That through your resources, the kingdom will advance. That is the end of it. So the trouble that is in your place of work, men are only puppets. There are spirits behind the scenes manipulating men. But you see, I, I, I say this respectfully. The ignorance of many believers is their unbecoming. We interpret things sociologically. Why do people just hate me like that? Oh, Elizabeth, it's not about your barrenness. God was, Satan was fighting the arrival of John who will ordain Jesus. It is not about your barrenness. Let me tell you this. Interpret every negative thing in your life as it connects to kingdom come. There is nothing Satan does except he finds that it has a bearing to the purposes of God. This way you interpret the things happening in your life and in others. Knowing this gives you the compassion to stand by people in their down times and say, I know the fact that it looks like this family, you are responsible, you are loving the Lord, but father is not working, mother is not working. We know that there is something. Satan has seen that your excelling will do something to the kingdom. Are we together? For everybody here, we're about to pray, who has experienced an attack and is experiencing some kind of attack in your life. I am reading the writings on the wall for you. Believe me, there may be roles you may have played in partnership or through ignorance, but largely it is that Satan has plotted that graph and found out that if Elizabeth has a baby, John will come and John will ordain Jesus who will save the world. And so we fight Elizabeth. It takes power to thwart the purposes of Satan. Not suggestions. Not sympathy. When you read the Messianic prophecy, Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 4. Jesus reiterated it in Luke chapter 4 also. Here's what Jesus said. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Isaiah the prophet was speaking about Jesus. For he hath anointed me, he says, to preach glad tidings to the poor or the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to set at liberty them that are in prison. Do you know there are men who are in prison? You would not see a physical prison. 
you know you are in prison where the only thing growing in your life is your age when nothing else grows in your life that is bondage I wish I were lying I would have just said sorry I'm joking but I'm very very serious only God knows the schemings of Satan over your life between now and December. Don't sit down and say it will not happen. Many have made that arrogant, bold claim to their detriment. It will take power. Behold, I give you power, he says. This has nothing to do, like I said, with abuse of power and fanatism. I know that there are people who have just made a jamboree and, you know, childishness and, and ill prepared people here and there people have made mistakes around when it has to do with abuse of spiritual gifts but please do not get into criticizing power because you will be making a mistake that may cost you your lifetime it is true it takes power to remain a man of God loving Jesus the moment you answer the call of God upon your life there are demons assigned to you to destroy you parents only God knows the schemings of Satan over your children to rubbish and thwart their life you may ask what is Satan looking for to use your life as a canvas and write that God is not faithful but in this conference and in the name of Jesus I dare by the Spirit of God to tell you that anyone's life that has come under captivity this is the season where God sets you free in the name of Jesus Christ how about those who start a thing and never complete it God is called Alpha and Omega Jesus why do you start things and not finish we give all kinds of explanation and it, it can the the physical reason may be government or individual or antagonisms but I, I i tell you those are just the obvious answers not the right ones satan is the the control room behind the pain john chapter 10 and verse 10 he says the thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and to destroy do you know what that means you never see satan around your life until there is something to kill something to steal and something to destroy a particular man of god not too long went to bury his mother and when he got there they were done with the burial and then he was in the room with his dear wife and according to her she said she began to see light like a man flashing a torchlight just at the window and she was tapping her husband say ah, my husband who is flashing light at the door and she turned when she turned back she saw a dead body leaning on her that was it this is the world we live in this is not to make you fear my Bible says now thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph but you will not triumph just because you want to it will take power hallelujah I hope that as God grants grace by evening we'll be able to have the time even if it's just two to five minutes to speak over people and let me request respectfully from the leadership that if you will allow may I request that in coming by evening I want everyone to please write your prayer request before the Lord do we agree well it's subject to the leadership that we will pray I assure you that which has kept you down if God be God in this conference this will be the end of it we do not make our boast by reason of anything we have in ourselves the Bible says we do not claim to be sufficient in ourselves but it says our sufficiency is of God who have made us able ministers after the new covenant for the flesh the latter killeth but the spirit gives life so I want to please plead and request even for our family connecting from across the globe I'm sure that through the social media platforms you can submit your prayer request everything that has threatened you let's bring it before the Lord are we together now? Yes. 
and cry to the God of heaven who is able to arise that your life will have a consolation that indeed Jesus Christ is alive not just because you read it you can taste and see that the Lord is good let's wrap up number four the first biblical index for growth and maturity I said is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Jesus Christ in experience number two your depth of the comprehension of the principles of the kingdom and that authority in this kingdom is knowledge dependent the dominion in this kingdom depends on knowledge number three the outworkings of the power of God in and through your life and then number four the fourth biblical index to measure growth and maturity in this kingdom is your love life love for God and love for your fellow man first John please chapter 4 and verse 7 first John chapter 4 your love life love for God and love for men first John chapter 4 please please be patient and watch while I read beloved it says let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God next verse he that loveth not he says knoweth not God for God is love next verse in this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him it's a long reading please keep on media hearing is love not that we loved God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins beloved if God so loved us we ought also to love one another in fact let's just stop here the full text is 7 to 21 but he says that we must love God and then love one another love God and love one another John chapter 13 please and verse 35 John 13 35 John 13 35 here's what it says by this the demonstration of this love shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another hallelujah in first corinthians chapter 12 we'll look at verse 31 but paul there from chapter 12 began to mentor the church now theologically speaking at that time there was such a move of the spirit an outpouring of the spirit as we call it over the church in corinth and there were all kinds of manifestations of the gift of the spirit but with these manifestations there was a lot of lawlessness so paul had to come to set things in order are we together to the end that all things be done decently and in order and part of that conference he held now he began to help them understand what was happening to them and when we get to 12 and verse 31 he now said different things about the gifts of the spirit the gifts of prophecy the word of wisdom the word of knowledge when we get to 31 you would think there is nothing else he says but covet earnestly the best gifts and yet show I unto you a more excellent way now 13 verse 1 he's showing us a more excellent way 13 verse 1 the next chapter now chapter 13 verse 1 though I speak with the tongues of men he says the word tongue there's an ancient word for language the language of men and of angels and I have not love he says I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal next verse though I bestow all my goods I give this is verse what now is that true though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor charity and I give my body to be burned sacrifice and I have not love 
it profited me nothing. Verse 3. Okay, now, okay, I'm sure that's, let's, let's just continue. Charity or love suffereth long. It is kind. It envieth not. It vaunted not itself. It is not puffed up. He's given the character of love. Next verse, please. It doth not behave itself unseemingly. It seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. It thinketh no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Next verse. Love never fails. In fact, let's stop there. Very powerful statement. Love never fails. Do you know what this means? That means anything you see failing, add love to it. He says love never fails. A home that is failing, add love to it. A spiritual life that is failing, like an ingredient, add love to it. Love never fails. He calls love the more excellent way. The more excellent way of preaching is to preach in love. The more excellent way of being a businessman is to be a businessman full of love. The more excellent way to be a father is to be a father with love, a mother with love, a child with love, a CEO with love, that when that love factor is there, you have the bond of perfectness. Can I tell you, I know many prayer warriors who do not love people, even though they love God. And the Bible says, how do you say you love God whom you have not seen? Many people love Jesus today simply because they've not seen him. If Jesus arrives on earth after one week, their love will expire. They will be tired of Jesus and fight him in a way that will be more than the way the scribes and the Pharisees fought him. Let me tell you this. Love, I'm wrapping up now, is based on a revelation. It has nothing to do with emotions. There, is, there are certain things that if you do not know, you cannot love men. Two things I will tell you about men that will help you love men. Number one, the best of any man is still a man. That is the first information about men. You want to be able to love men, you must know that the best of every man, no matter how well intentioned, is still a man. If you don't know this, you cannot love men. Number two, love is derived from the revelation that the same way Jesus Christ showed you undeserving kindness and mercy, the same way if he were to leave us to fight for our salvation, none of us would be saved. The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. You can love the unlovable when you understand what Jesus has done. These are the four biblical indices to measure growth and maturity. So the next time you say, I am a matured Christian, we do not argue, but we bring the litmus test. Let me see. Is there in experience the formation of the character of Christ in you? Number two, your level of spiritual enlightenment do you have sufficient knowledge to be able to command the kind of result that brings glory to the name of the Lord? Number three, can we see the outworking of the power of God in your life? I didn't have the time to teach on power. If you're really studying on power, you have to go to Genesis chapter one. God himself showed us how power works. In this kingdom, you are as powerful to the degree to which what you say comes to pass. That's it. And God said, let there be, and there was. And he saw that what he said was good. If you say, especially in the name of Jesus, and it does not happen, something is wrong. When he came to the centurion, remember, the centurion said, no, don't bother coming to my home. I am a man of authority also. I understand authority. I have soldiers under me. I say to one, go and he will go. To another, come and he will come. To another, do this and he will do it. Jesus, I know that you are not 
by yourself you are also under authority speak the word only and jesus said who taught you this i have not found this faith this understanding not in israel can i tell you the day you speak over your life and over the people around you and it comes to pass i'm not talking of prophesying i'm talking of declaring with authority your words now become like the word of god that you take the word of god and you put it on the lips of faith and when you say god bless you and people say amen it's not just a ritual god bless you means all that it takes and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, he says, so that ye having sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So when you say God bless you, do you know what you are saying? May God search your life for what is missing and ensure that it comes, whatever will make you sufficient. That is the meaning of God bless you. That is the meaning of bless you. Yet people say amen and in all honesty, nothing happens. We're going to pray. This night, we will be looking at another subject as I wrap up my session. The gospel. Now we looked at growth and maturity. And then now we'll be looking at the subject of kingdom advance and ministry by the time we return in the evening. We're going to pray. I want you to talk to the Lord whilst you're seated and let it come as a cry from the depth of your heart. Lord, I desire genuine growth. I desire to increase. From the lens of this teaching and this conference, I have seen that I need to contend for exactitude in my spiritual life. Talk to the Lord. Just one or two minutes and then we're done for this session. Someone is talking to Jesus. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Father, I desire that my life becomes an expression of the character of the Christ. In experience, in words, in lifestyle, in my communication, in my understanding. For some, you are praying and say, Lord, I confess ignorance in many areas. Many areas that support my excelling as a believer. I confess that there is so much I do not know. Help me. I am willing to learn and I'm willing to contend for exact growth through knowledge. Number three, for many of us, we've been buffeted by a plethora of ills around our lives health conditions, mental conditions, demonic oppressions, all kinds of stagnations and, and, and ill doings of darkness in our life. It's time for us to pray. Father, that you will visit me and supply the requisite level of spiritual power it takes to walk in the experience of liberty. And finally, we are going to pray for our love life the bible says it is by this that all men will know they will not know that we are people of god just by oratory or good preaching just by intelligence or money or cars and houses accolades as important as these things are the bible says the one biblical index that all men will use to know that we are his disciples is when we have love one for another now you are going to pray father take away this bitterness in my life i'm tired of holding on to bitterness whether against members against family against my brother my sister my husband my wife against the church against eldership lord i'm ready to grow the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and he says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus he says the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross and even despised the shame 
talk to the Lord in prayer grant me the grace let love begin to manifest in my life the grace to forbear the grace to forbid petty things that continue to clamp down my life and my progress I'm ready to let it go a new me is evolving from this conference in the name of Jesus Christ please look up this is the reason why we come to church these four pillars I gave you is the reason why you should invite people to come so the next time they ask you why are you going to church now you have an answer I am going to church because it is the platform authorized to sponsor my conformity to the image of the Christ in experience number two it is the platform that provides me the opportunity to gain spiritual intelligence as I am methodically mentored doctrine after doctrine topic after topic according to Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the Bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in the breaking of bread and in prayers and in fellowship this was the strategy of the early church they continued steadfastly in the doctrine of the apostles and fellowship breaking of bread and prayers that's how they became mighty people so when you come to church this evening tomorrow and any other day have it at the back of your mind that you're not doing the pastor or the elders a favor it is you signing that register in the realm of the spirit you are showing God your commitment and your intention for growth I am coming because I desire to be like Jesus in experience. I am coming because I am aware of the vast ignorance and I need the requisite level of knowledge that supports my growth and my excelling. Number three, I am coming because I am aware that there is an adversary determined to thwart my life and then I come to access the power of God, the energizing of the spirit that gives me the stamina to be able to face life. Finally, I am coming because I am developing like that metamorphosis that happens to an insect from egg, larva, pupa and adult. I am evolving into a new me one who is full of love let us pray father we thank you for the privilege of your word the Bible declares again that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple we have submitted ourselves to your word and Lord we thank you for that which has come from the mouth of the Spirit I pray in the name of Jesus that the grace to walk in keeping with these truths that they, they do not end up as mere discussions but that they sustain the power to transform us in the name of Jesus Lord I am praying that you will bless everyone who has made the sacrifice to come here and to connect even um, to listen and to learn I pray that you will bless them father we pray for the meeting in the evening we pray that it will be a moment of encounter even by your spirit thank you again oh God for our pastors our elders they that labor in word and doctrine even over Equa Plateau Church thank you for the membership the loyalty the love the sacrifice the forbearance thank you because you are taking this family of faith from one level of glory to the other that equa plateau church will be like a trophy lifted even over the plateau in the name of jesus we pray that as we disperse for a while that you grant us grace that we return refreshed we return um, with greater passion even to learn may the lord bless you may the lord increase you for in jesus name i pray Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. 
pray pray for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 